good evening most distinguished chief guest of the day dr justin paul professor university of peroto rico uh, usa respected dr sundar raman our managing trustee firebird institute of research in management and managing director shiva techian limited dedicated members of faculty students invitees ladies and gentlemen at the outset it gives me immense pleasure to welcome our chief guest dr justin paul professor puerto rico usa to this webinar i am truly happy that a high profile professor amits us to deliver his speech on management research writing and premier uh, on for premier journals do's and don'ts a renowned professor with h index 34 i10 index 72 and his article been cited by 2053 scholars in 2020 is with us today and we look forward to learn more from him how he does his research and how he go further in this world of research we wholeheartedly welcome you sir with immense pleasure i welcome our managing trustee dr sundar raman a man with vision and critical thinking to this webinar we welcome you sir we welcome and uh, extend our special thanks to dr ram kumar who is instrumental for this webinar series at firebird once again i welcome one and all for this webinar thank you thanks for your welcome address ma'am thank you so much uh, so now it's time for our uh, honorable managing trustee sir i invite you to give a presidential address like uh, thank you professor ram uh, dear dr justin paul dr prema dr chetan bajaj and professor ram kumar faculty at firebird and and most importantly this wide global audience of delegates who have come for the seminar um wish you a very good evening that's on india time but since it's a global conference wish you a good morning or afternoon or whatever the case may be depends on wherever you are in the world at the outset let me first say i hope you are all safe you and your near and dear ones are safe and in the process of getting vaccinated because covid 19 which is actually covid 20 seems to be coming on into 21 as well and i wish you all a very safe journey as we try to navigate this crisis and get out friends i am not an academic i actually come from the business world and i i uh, am more comfortable in what i call action oriented research and action oriented education firebird was started with this vision to create world class contemporary management leaders in fact our vision is very clear it says to be recognized as a forerunner in transformative education and to be a b school that has the maximum impact in all spheres of societal influence nothing would fit more with this ethos then to be a platform to connect distinguished global speakers with a global audience and hence i am very happy that this initiative has been taken by our professors and uh, i am so happy to see the overwhelming response for this program of course this would not be possible without the kind of digital platforms that have come about in the last 18 months as one of the blessings in what has other been been a very gloomy uh, outlook is the in emergence of digital platforms and technologies that allow us to collaborate and talk to each other these platforms are going to stay this is the new normal and this new normal will change teaching in fact education itself will change it will change the value that's placed on original knowledge creation because i believe that collaboration is going to go up multifold particularly collaboration after knowledge creation to elaborate i would say that if you are able to create and put out papers or or articles or original knowledge content in whatever form that interests people 
the ability of them to come back and talk to you and to further that discussion has been increased many fold today, which will bring you almost close, in my opinion, uh, into a quasi consulting uh, uh, kind of approach. And I would say knowledge creation would really mature in going forward. And I say this in the context of today's program, because research is nothing but knowledge creation. It's original knowledge creation, and it really differentiates the creator and the institutions associated with it. It makes you stand above, a cut above. And original knowledge creation is only as good as the presentation. How do you maximize impact? And hence, a topic like this, management research writings in premier institutions is most apt. And we have such a wonderful global speaker. Normally when I actually uh, am called to give these presidential addresses or whatever, um, I do my research on, uh, uh, on the speaker. And I am truly impressed as a non-academic with the kind of work that Dr. Justin Paul has done. Your work with your seven Ps and, and, and the various aspects of brand management and internationalization are very relevant in today's actual corporate world. And like I was saying uh, a little earlier, uh, Professor Paul, it's, uh, uh, I profusely thank you for accepting our invitation. And uh, it would have been a greater pleasure to meet you in person, which I hope would happen sometime in the future. Uh, but at this point, we'll suffice by listening to you virtually. I also would like to compliment Professor Ram Kumar uh, for his assiduous preparation for this event. Ram has sort of become a specialist in creating uh, what I call this connector of global communities. And I, I, I'm sure he goes from strength to strength and uh, 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 kudos to him and to all his friends who are in the Firebird team who have assisted him. Friends, I hope you all find this session informative, memorable, and one that has a positive impact on your future endeavors. Thank you all for being here, particularly the speaker. And uh, I hope that it's going to be a, a, a a wonderful event uh, over the next uh, uh, hour or so. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot, sir. Thanks a lot for your wonderful presidential address. Uh, and now it's time for me to introduce uh, our uh, chief guest, Professor Justin Paul. I don't think that he requires that uh, introduction. Uh, even every one of us knows about uh, uh, the Professor Justin Paul here. Uh, but as a formal note, I would like to say that he is uh, a former professor of University of Washington. Also, he is associated with the uh, uh, University of Puerto Rico in USA as a professor. And uh, he is also a distinguished faculty uh, professor at Indian Institute of Management, Cody Code, and uh, SIBM, Symbiasis Institute of Business Management, Pune. And he is a remarkable achievement. He is an editor in chief of A ranked International Journal of Consumer Studies. And also, as an uh, he is working as an associate editor of Journal of Business Research. He holds uh, three honorary titles, uh, distinguished professor, including Puerto Rico, IM Code, and SABM. And uh, he is known as an author and also co author of seven uh, uh, very important, renowned books, which is uh, celebrated around the world, including uh, uh, business environment, uh, marketing management, service marketing, import export management, etc. Et and uh, yeah, he is a very well known person in uh, writing uh, papers. He has published enormous, more than 100 articles in very reputed journals, especially listed in ABDC and all. And uh, uh, more than 7 lakhs uh, uh, people have downloaded his articles for the last six years. It's a very remarkable achievement. We are very proud to have Professor Justin Paul here. And not only that, he served as a uh, distinguished faculty, visiting faculty, and he served as a, I mean, a, a chairperson of a plenary session, uh, a keynote address. And uh, he's a very remarkable and celebrated professor around the world. He visited, I think, uh, more than 20, 35, 20, 25 countries. And uh, he stepped in a lot of institutions, universities in India, in the world. And uh, yeah, uh, he's also uh, uh, visiting a lot of institutions, uh, including IIM, Code and SIBM. And uh, uh, yeah, he has written more than 100 papers. And he published three best-selling case studies with the Iway and Harvard cases. Uh, he has visited over 60 countries as a visiting professor and speaker. Yeah, that is the introduction speaker. And uh, Professor, we welcome you. And uh, now the floor is yours. I, I request you to deliver your address. 
Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Ram Kumar and uh, Director Professor uh, Rima and uh, uh, Dr. Sundar Raman sir and uh, um, uh, other faculty members and researchers, ladies and gentlemen. It's an honor for me to be here today with you to deliver this session on publishing uh, management research in premier journals. Thank you for these invitations. And I would like to suggest you to have this as an interactive session because uh, based on my experience of delivering many webinars, I find that webinars are more effective when it is a two-way session because uh, people don't uh, pay much attention when one person is speaking using the webinar mode. So that way, I, I would suggest that um, uh, we need to have interaction at least twice during this session. I, I would stop after 10, 15 minutes and I would give you enough time to ask questions. And I would go on to discuss, continue with uh, my PowerPoint. And then um, we can also have another round of interaction towards the end of the session. Uh, other, I can also have three times uh, interval for discussion. So choice minimum. So I would expect that you can quickly introduce your name and uh, in case if you want to say your university, that's also fine. And then ask your question. And, and, and that way it would be a very, a very much uh, interactive to a uh, useful session because my purpose is to deliver something useful for your benefit based on my experience as an editor and as an author. Yeah, so I can start sharing my screen now and, and uh, uh, yeah, you can see me now, right? Yeah, it is visible, sir, very much. Yeah. Yeah. So let me start with uh, publishing do's and don'ts and then uh, I can go on to different types of articles and uh, how do you actually develop from scratch to publication level. So let me begin with the basics of publishing. I have been working as uh, Editor-in-Chief of International Journal of Consumer Studies uh, for a year now. So this is my second year. I already completed a year as Editor-in-Chief. And before that, I was an Associate Editor with uh, different journals, including Services Industries Journal, uh, Business Ethics, um, International Journal of Merchant Markets. I, I was uh, associated with, with four journals and um, I uh, decided to resign from associated editor position to take up my chief editor position um, a year ago. And, and uh, last one year, I have to say that I'm actually holding two jobs. One main, my main job is actually my chief editor job and my second job is my university professor job because my editor job takes that much time every day because I'm heading a journal that received fifth maximum submissions in, in the subject field business and economics in the world during 2020. So our journal, International Journal of Consumer Studies, uh, total, in terms of total number of submissions wise, it was fifth maximum submissions in, among all business journals in the world last year. So our journal has uh, become a popular journal in terms of total number of submissions that we receive and that we attract every day basis. We get uh, on an average five, six submissions every day. So uh, we have heavy workload as editors to screen and select best possible editors, best possible manuscripts. So I would, I would try to share some experiences and try to talk about expectations of editors and reviewers when uh, you submit a manuscript to different journals. As mentioned by Ram Kumar, I also serve as associated editor with a couple of other journals these days. So I do have a lot of experience as an editor now and, and I would try to share uh, some of my experiences uh, with case if we have questions, I would be also happy to answer your questions uh, uh, with a particular reference to your doubts. And you can also uh, note my email in case if there is something important later, you can also email me, it's profjust at uh, gmail.com. You can always find me on social media, LinkedIn and other Twitter, social, you know, Facebook, everywhere I'm there. So um, I try to be more uh, people's, uh, uh, you know, people's man or people's editor. So I try to interact with the um, common uh, researchers from developing countries and encourage them. This is what I try to do, subject to my time constraint. Okay, so some chat box has come. 
Okay, so let me begin with uh, JNL, where I serve as editor in chief. It's an Australian uh, Business Dean's Council ranking. It's an A rank journal, International Journal of Consumer Studies. It's more than A rank, it is a 45 year old journal. So it doesn't enjoy the serving impact factor as of now. So, however, we are expecting a very high impact factor by 2022 because we have selected very excellent, excellent articles during last one year, those excellent articles that will drive our impact factor within one year. We are expecting 2.5 impact factor by June this year, and we are expecting five impact factor by next year, June. And uh, because other 45 year old global academic journals do have four, five, six impact factor, and our journal doesn't have that. This was mainly because our previous editor was a retired lady professor from UK. And after retirement, sometimes people don't get motivated to uh, work towards the numbers. So that way, a uh, journal doesn't enjoy the serving back factor compared to the track record of the journal. So we have 13 associate editors from different countries, and they work uh, with premier universities in different countries. And uh, we have an annual special issue for literature review articles, and we have also launched another special issue for theory developments. And we prefer theory development papers literature review articles and uh, empirical papers that are useful for global audience rather than just useful for one country audience. Global audience is our priority. So any article that you submit need to have global flavor or it has to be written with the target audience from different countries. The target audience should not be just people from one country. Yeah, I also serve as an associated with European Management Journal. This is that this is a journal with 2.9 impact factor. It's a joint venture journal from University of Glasgow and ESCP London. In case if you have any doubt about this journal, I can also answer this uh, about this journal a bit later. Yeah, so this is another journal where I am associate editor these days or last three last two and a half years. It's it's a, it's not very fast journal, but 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 uh, International Journal of Consumer Studies has emerged as one of the fastest journal in the world. Yeah, so now coming to today's topic, publishing research, publishing papers in premier academic journal, a ranked or A-star ranked journal. I do have some formulas. I do have some ideas in capsule formats. And my ideas I am, I'm trying to present in the form of do's and don'ts. Since you are all, or most of them, I'm told, do have some experience or some background of publishing. So when you have some background of publishing, you do know that uh, you have some idea about what to do and what not to do. But I am trying to synthesize those ideas and trying to put this more specifically with a systematic approach suggesting these specific things to do and these specific things not to do. So my first point is follow generalized approach. This is important. For example, if, if your model works in setting A, it should work in setting B too. Generalized approach means, I give, I give you another example. Many people, especially people from countries like India and Pakistan, they are patriotic about their country. When they write a research paper, they highlight the achievements of their country in the introduction itself. You have to assume or you have to expect that this paper that you submit to a global academic journal is for the global audience, is for the people from different countries. They are not very much interested in knowing about your country's achievements, but they are interested in knowing about the subject matter. So as part of generalized approach, I suggest you to begin your introduction part, focusing your topic and recent developments in the topic and talking about pioneering and recent studies in the topic and highlight research gap. And, and try to show that others have been done this type of remarkable study, which you are doing or which you have done. 
So you have to focus on the topic in the introduction section rather than talking about the country context. That is what is generalized approach. You can be even silent about the country conduct. You don't have to talk too much about the country conduct in a research paper that is targeted for global audience with the generalized approach. And number two, you need to have a flaw in a research paper. Flaw in a research paper is very important. Sometimes people have ideas, but they, when they present the research results, they do not present it in a structured and scientific way. So reviewers and editors, they do work with time constraints. When they work with time constraints, you have to score very high with reference to presentation dimension, analytical dimension, and conceptual dimension. Or in other words, you have to contribute Conceptual contribution, analytical contribution, and presentation. Presentation is also very important. My second point here is, in your introduction, provide a roadmap of how the remainder of your paper is going to flow. For example, what each section is going to be discussed need to be synthesized and introduced in the last paragraph of the introduction. This is very important to create impression in the minds of editor and reviewers, because when editor or reviewers glance through, if they find better flow, they will be happy to review. If they do not find better flow, because each paragraph should flow from one another. If they find that these are flowing, there is link between each paragraph, they will read with interest and enthusiasm. Otherwise, they will tend to reject because people are not interested in spending their valuable time to read and waste their time. Keep in mind. And next point, next do's. These are different do's. Highlight the originality of your study in abstract and introduction. Is there something original and unique in your study? You have to ask this question. Because journals are interested, academicians in general are interested in reading and publishing something original. They are not interested in replication. They are not interested in uh, doing the same thing, you know, in a different uh, situation or a different context and kind of things. There has to be original contribution. What is original in your study? You have to, before you undertake a research, you have to think about what is original in your study. There is nothing original in your study. Your paper might get rejected. Sometimes you may be having something original in your study, but you will not present it as an original. So you have to also write in such a way that this is an original study and this is our original main contribution. This needs to be highlighted in the abstract and introduction. It is very important because many times reviewers do not read entire paper, every paragraph in the paper, but they will read introduction and abstract. First impression is the best impression. So you have to create that first impression, which will turn out to be the best impression. Explain uniqueness of your study. This is very important, uniqueness of your study. What is unique in your paper? Is there something unique in your paper? This is very, 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 very critical, uniqueness. I tell you the real world examples in real life. Why did Uber succeed? Why did Airbnb succeed? Why did Apple, American uh, company Apple, A for Apple, you know, Apple sells MacBook and iPhone and all those. Why did Apple's iPhone succeed? This is mainly because of uniqueness. 
suppose if you have something unique your chances of success is high sometimes you have to be also lucky otherwise sometimes you will not get through so uniqueness is important and that unique contribution has to be the that need to be highlighted it's important think about something unique i am today i'm proud of mainly because i have some unique contribution to the academic world which is also useful for the industry i developed a 7p framework for international marketing these seven p's are not the traditional historical p constructs these seven p's are performance is equal to performance is function of potential path process pattern problems and those kind of seven p's you know so i mean completely different set of p sets and i i developed a formula i developed a framework 7p it's a model 7p framework for international marketing any company interested in international marketing can use this framework which can be also used for international marketing plan even in local marketing plan or business plan companies can use this this can be used as a framework or business plan framework in mba classrooms and and academicians can also apply the tenets of this in their research studies so i developed that 7p framework for international marketing focusing on performance for the companies performance as a function of other p constructs like uh, performance as a function of potential performance as a function of path process um you know processes followed by companies and problems that they face uh, the more the problems the less will be performance and that kind of formula i developed in my article 7p framework for international marketing it's a very unique article and it is getting a lot of a lot of uh, citations these days and i developed another model on mass teach model for uh, premium brand management how to build a premium brand mass teach model mass teach stands for mass prestige i read an article in harvard business review and i got ideas to develop a mass teach model and mass teach score scale and 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 uh, that article is also capturing worldwide attention these days even though i could not publish that article in an a star journal because sometimes a star journal editors are a little bit biased sometimes uh, uh, it is a single authored article and so on so and i, I did that when uh, i was not very well known so because sometimes uh, if you are a well known author you have a plus point in some journal some editors have that kind of bias i have to admit that and i have to say that because i have experienced this kind of bias as an author when i submitted papers couple of years ago when nobody knows me when you know like uh, three four years ago people never paid any attention to me in, in a, so because i was an ordinary researcher at that time it was difficult for me to publish but i published this article that article is getting a lot of uh, attention these days and mastich model stands for mastich is uh, mastich stands for mass prestige and what i argue in that model is that i show how to create mass prestige and how to create premium brands and uh, what i argue is price is a function of mass prestige and mass prestige is a function of product promotion and uh, play strategies and as a result the outcome is that price is a function of other three p's product promotion and plays premium price is a function of product promotion and play strategy so premium price is a function of mass prestige and premium price is a function of product promotion and play strategy this is what i argue in mass teach model and i do have a scale for that to measuring mass teach value or mass prestige value of different competing brands or a single brand in different markets and so on so that kind of unique model or unique uh, uh, scale or something that you have to develop so that uh, uh, people will pay attention to your work this is important in research and many journal editors as a journal editor i always look at whether there is something unique in the paper submitted if i find something unique i take initiative even if reviewer is rejecting that paper i might take initiative as an editor if i find something unique this is the good thing some editors are more proactive because editors can use their discretion in case if they like an article or or if they find that there is substance in an article there is uniqueness in an article so this is also important and next point is do plagiarism check before you submit because plagiarism check is very important there are many people those who are submitting very casually sometimes people uh, you know some some uh, reasonably well known people also submit uh, plagiarized uh, papers recently like i i i have uh, two 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 bad memories of handling plagiarized papers of other people one was very recent case uh, this was uh, submitted 
by uh, somebody who is who was uh, when he was submitted he was in uae he was a faculty member in uae but he is originally from india he is uh, uh, originally from uh, govan bombay catholic guy and uh, he is he is he is trying to be establish himself as an academician these days and now he is job in france and uh, he submitted a paper with 49 percentage of uh, similarity you know so his job is that he will organize these papers from different uh, junior indians and he is somewhat senior and then he just start his name he never checks uh, plagiarism and all those kind of things and he had met me in some two conferences so we were reasonably good friends so he thought that uh, if editor is his close friend he can even submit 49 percentage uh, plagiarized paper and then you know he will keep sending me whatsapp messages to accept uh, uh 49 percentage plagiarized uh, paper and all those kind of thing so this kind of practice is not acceptable and for some reason so i could not um, consider his uh, plagiarized paper and uh, sometimes if you're working as editor or director or dean you cannot accept all requests from everyone so so you might end up uh, i mean some people would end uh, you know would would uh, uh, end up your uh, enemies or your critics when when you do not accept their papers or when you do not give them promotion as a director and those kind of things. So this kind of practice plagiarism check is must and it is very important because uh, if, you, if if what happens if you if you publish a plagiarized paper, the real owner of that paper or if you have copied some part from some other paper, he might find that later because these days it's very easy if you cite somebody's paper they will get automatic uh, uh, up, up, automatic emails from google scholar and so many so many places and then they will definitely find uh, your, your you know the copied part and then they will complain to the journal your paper will get retracted there are so many issues that way so to avoid those kind of things you have to avoid plagiarism uh, and, and it is important even i had another example from australia this was 2 years ago the first example I was talking about uh, someone whose last name is Pereira, but uh, the second example uh, is an Australian example. Australian example is uh, I was invited by an Australian university and they made some connection and I was editing a special issue and someone submitted another plagiarized paper. And it was difficult for me when you know a person, when you know a friend and somebody is trying to use you or misuse you and submit a plagiarized paper, but I had to reject it because it, it is the job of editor to reject a plagiarized paper. So ensure that, uh, and not only that, once you submit a plagiarized paper, some journals like Academy of Management Journal block uh, yeah. authors, those who submit plagiarized paper uh, for two, three years. So, and, and you cannot publish in that journal for next two, three years if you submit a plagiarized paper. So there are certain things like that. So keep in mind that you have to do things on merit basis and, and avoid plagiarism and so on. And another point which I would like to talk about is cite recent papers. Your paper should consist of a lot of recent papers. Many papers, when I look at introduction and literature review, most of the citations are outdated. Most of them because many papers copy literature review from some other paper and they are not bothered to uh, update the citations. So you have to update the citations and then you have to argue that none of the other researchers have done this study and this study is unique and in order to establish that you have to cite all the recent papers in your area especially if you are submitting to a journal target journal you have to cite recent papers from the target journal and and that shows that your awareness your knowledge about the subject matter and recent developments and recent studies in your area it's very important recent study citations if you don't do that many editors and reviewers will will reject your paper it's important and I'm going to explain next uh, four more points and going to give you time for asking questions based on these points. And then, then, then I would give you 10, 15 minutes to ask questions. Next point is do robustness checks such as multicollinearity in time series studies and common method bias in uh, survey studies. If you're doing uh, time series studies, you need uh, robustness checks such as multicollinearity. And if you're doing single survey based studies, Common method bias is uh, bias test is is expected these days in most of the journals. Such uh, such uh, uh, robustness check. They are they are examples for robustness checks and robustness checks is important. And also, if you're doing survey studies, many journals these days prefer 
three studies in the same paper, especially in marketing area, they have a strong preference for three studies in the same paper when you submit a paper to premier journals. And next point is, get it English edited and proofread by someone else. Why do I suggest is, English editing and proof, suppose if you are not a native speaker, your English level would be good, but at the same time, you may be tired after writing a paper. And in order to uh, write a paper, it takes a lot of time. So once you're tired, it, it will be difficult for you to energize and, and be enthusiastic to complete the paper. So hire someone, it can be your own student, it can be your own research assistant or teaching assistant if you have one. Otherwise, hire some freelancer. You know, publishing companies, uh, English editing service also you can use, but it will take time and I mean, it will not take much time, but it, they, they will charge $300, $400. But there are some freelance websites like upwork.com where there are many freelancers are available. You can negotiate with them and get a price and get the work done in three, four days. Otherwise, hire someone you know and get it done. This is important. Because doctors need nurses, nurses help. Last week, I got a, my first dose of coronavirus uh, injection, uh, what is called vaccine. So last Monday, and, and it was given by a nurse. So even Prime Minister Modi was given uh, coronavirus vaccine by a nurse. So doctors don't give that. So the same way, if you are a professor, for you need a research assistant or you need a freelance editor or pro freelance proofreader to check your article hire them and uh, it is worth because many institutions these days are giving a lot of uh, supportive measures for undertaking research activity in the form of monetary rewards or points and uh, exemption from teaching if you have publication so you don't have to teach too much so there are different ways of looking at it so that way even if you pay 10000 rupees or uh, 100 dollars or 70 dollars or 60 dollars to your proofreader it's all right, you know, so because you have a benefit, you have an advantage in the days to come, sometimes the same year, if you publish a good paper in a good journal, especially in premier journals. My next point is, so my, my point regarding English editing and proofreading is that if you are a professor, your time is valuable, so you need an assistant. It can be freelance assistant, it can be uh, a full-time research assistant. It is like a doctor and nurse. Many academic institutions give this facility like IIMs, but uh, some academic institutions do not have funds to give this facility to the uh, professors. So, but you, I have worked in both kind of setup. Currently I do have an assistant, but uh, uh, when I was in Japan, I did not have an assistant. I had good salary in Japan, but my Japanese university never gave me an assistant. So my, I was in Japan for three, three and a half years, but my research didn't uh, go very well when I was in Japan because I did not have an assistant and I was also busy with a lot of teaching. Suppose if you're busy with a lot of teaching, sometimes your research uh, would suffer. But last uh, three, four years, uh, my teaching workload is not very high. So I do a lot of research and I've been doing a lot of research. So next point is, next point is, Sir, you please unmute and speak, sir. Okay. So, yeah. Next point is, if you have an empirical paper, derive hypotheses in empirical paper. And these hypotheses should be derived scientifically based on prior studies. There has to be one paragraph to derive each hypothesis. And research questions in a qualitative paper. If you have a qualitative paper, you should have research questions. And if you have a conceptual paper, you should have theoretical or testable propositions in a conceptual paper. These are important. And next point is, yeah, in your literature review, in an empirical paper, you, have, you need to have a literature review or even in a qualitative paper that uh, you use interview method, you need a literature review. So in your literature review, focus on findings of prior studies rather than just elaborating what others have done. Other studies, what are the findings from those studies? Those need to be highlighted. Those need to get uh, 
importance in your literature review. And you can also include a table based on the findings of other studies, like uh, pooling the findings of other studies, finding commonality in uh, other studies, whether there is uh, any common uh, finding emerging from previous research in this specific area. You can also check or uh, try to corroborate or contrast uh, your file with the findings in discussion section. This is, these are all important thing. Okay. Yeah, so presenting prior studies findings in a table format will also help because tables are conveying messages in a better and effective way compared to a descriptive write-up. Okay, so another point is implement all comments if you get revision. This is very important. Sometimes you get revision, sometimes your papers get rejected because journals accept only five to 10 percentage of submissions. Like International Journal of Consumer Studies, last year acceptance rate is 6.4 percentage. Journal of Business Research acceptance rate is six percentage last year. So when journals accept, technovation acceptance rate is 5.5 percentage last year. So information management acceptance rate, information and management acceptance rate is about uh, six and a half percentage. Journal of Retailing, five and a half percentage. International Journal of Information Management, 10 percentage. So when journals accept only this percentage of manuscripts, so they, they do that mainly to ensure quality plus also to have some kind of exclusivity and because publication also means jobs. So you need to submit papers with perfection. Perfection is critical, perfection is important. If you don't have perfection, your paper is most likely to get rejected. So if you get revision, that is a fortune. So if a journal editor is asking you to revise your paper, consider it as a fortune or take it as a achievement and revise strictly. If reviewers give you comments, editors give you comment. It is very important that you implement those comments. Sometimes you will not like their comments, but you might need to implement those comments if you want an acceptance. It is like if your father or mother or brother or sister is asking you something to do. If you don't do, they are not going to be happy with you and they might reject you. It's the same way, you know, if you don't implement the comments, reviewers might reject your paper. And next point is select a topic with newness and novelty and avoid recycled topic. There are so many recycled topics, avoid recycled topics because you might recycle papers on recycled topics will get rejected. I also, in addition to my master's model and 7P framework for international marketing, since I had a lot of uh, cost, uh, you know, a lot of desire to develop some new models or new frameworks and such kind of things. Uh, you know, I also developed another framework uh, on scope framework for small companies, scope framework, small companies face problems. And I developed uh, uh, another framework called COPS, COPS framework for uh, organization facing complex problems. COPS framework stands for complex problems and solutions uh, for organizations. So uh, such something new, something uh, creative, something innovative, something unique should come out from your paper. Such, uh, such works will get uh, more public acceptance. Some journals will reject such papers also, but eventually when it get published, it takes academics move slowly, but uh, in long run, you will get acceptance. You will get better recognition. And as I mentioned before, focus on conceptual, analytical, and presentation dimension. These are also very important. There are three dimensions you have to keep in mind. Now I would be happy to uh, take up some questions and answer some questions. Uh, sir, there is a uh, one person raised a hand. Uh, actually, first one Aditi Rao, uh, the next one Rupesh Kumar. So, can I have Aditi Rao here? Please uh, unmute and speak. Aditi Rao. Okay, I request Dr. Rupesh Kumar. Yes, yeah, sir. Good evening, sir. Uh, good evening, Professor. Myself, Dr. Rupesh Kumar from Christ University, Bangalore. 
so the question which I wanted, uh, it, it was indeed uh, the session which you have uh, the given the points which was, it was is this very, in, in, it was uh, very valuable, sir. It is very valuable, the points which you have give, shared with us today. Uh, the question which I wanted to share, uh, to ask you is like, so whether uh, when, uh, do, when doing research, like the collaborative research with the foreign partners, like the Western counterparts from maybe from American, uh, from America or from the European countries, whether it matters for selection of a paper. Yeah, it's not necessary. So, I mean, uh, uh, you know, so it, it, it's, it's not just foreign counterparts. Suppose uh, some editors might have some bias. So what is the minimum requirement you need to have content? Minimum requirement, uh, if the content is not good enough, even if you have foreign partners, your paper will get rejected. So content is a very much requirement. It's a very important. And, uh, and also like uh, some editors, suppose if you're working in a very, very unknown institute, that may be a disadvantage for you because some editors can have some bias. But if you're working in a decent institute, uh, which editor may be aware of, that, that, that may help you. So your affiliation, uh, but your country doesn't matter because each country has reputed institutions, right? So every country has a good number of uh, uh, reasonably good institutions and those kind of things. And paper quality is very important. First is first and most important is paper quality. Plus, uh, uh, you need to have some reasonably good affiliation. So, but if it's what it's about, but if your paper quality doesn't have paper doesn't have minimum standard, even if you have affiliation, it is not going to help you. Okay. okay, sir. Thank you, sir. If organizers permit, uh, can I ask one more question? Like, yeah, you can observe permits. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you, sir. Uh, so the one more question which I wanted to ask is like uh, because many times which I've sent a paper, uh, they uh, say like uh, the paper, the uh, actually the results which have come out is from generally from a particular area or from a particular city, like the study which has been conducted in a Bangalore or Coimbatore or in a Mumbai, like, so they, they expect like uh, it is to be conducted in across, across the nation or, or two, three nations to be considered. So whether it is very, uh, very much important, like, uh, the geographical areas, which we select, like it should represent, the findings should represent a particular country and not a particular area, like. See, as I mentioned before, you need to present it also depending upon how you present it. Okay. If you send me an email, I will send you one or two articles that is presented. That's like, I have a study, which I co-authored with uh, some people from Pakistan, okay. but the way they presented uh, was very, 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 very global. So, uh, you need to present, you should not talk too much about Bangalore or India in your introduction and all you should focus on your topic rather than your city or your country. So that is what they are looking for, because if you talk too much about your city and your country in, in the introduction and everywhere, only your country people will re read your paper, only your country people will download your paper. That is not what they want. They want download from all over the world. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I request uh, uh, Mr. Pankaj Agarwal to raise uh, your question. Hello. Yeah, please. Hello. Uh, yeah, please uh, good, yeah. uh, good evening, Professor Paul. It is always a delight to listen to you. It is second time I'm listening. I'm connected to you with you on Facebook. And often I get papers from you. Thank you so much. So my question is that uh, sometimes it becomes very difficult to develop uh, some new model or concept. Uh, I get an idea that uh, I think of a problem like uh, in Bareilly, in Uttar Pradesh, we have business of uh, kite uh, thread, it's manja. And uh, I develop a topic like what are the problems they are facing, the opportunities they are having. So uh, is it possible to publish such kind of papers? See, all types of papers can be published provided you have you know, three types of contribution, like as mentioned, there has to be some conceptual contribution, conceptual advancement, which is, which is nothing but theoretical advancement mm -hmm. and, uh, the, the, you know, some analytical contribution. So how do you synthesize this? Synthesis can be using statistical analysis or using qualitative methods or, uh, using table format and figures. So synthesis, analytical contribution and presentation dimension 
so uh, because uh, judges the editors and reviewers when they serve us judges they look at these three dimensions and uh, uh, you know you need to articulate your ideas and present it present it in an effective way uh, regardless of your topic and and then you have to also keep in mind that uh, you as if you want to publish in a global journal you have to write in such a way that it is useful for the global audience thank you sir yeah uh, thank you mr pankaj i request mr anup to uh, raise your uh, question good evening distinguished uh, sir this is anup from isbr school bangalore i had to ask you two three things sir like i am a research scholar so i am initial stage of my research so nowadays everyone is concentrating on interdisciplinary research like interdisciplinary research is getting wide range of acceptance so uh, as you have already mentioned like 7p framework for international market so that inter- that framework is applicable, applicable for all over the world so like based on that 7p framework can we implement it on digital marketing like digital marketing is also getting international acceptance like every uh, as online is getting is as a small global village they are making it my doubt is one that one more doubt i had is like uh, sir you told about scope of scope approach of sami uh, small medium enterprises so that uh, small and medium enterprises has different meanings in different places like in india msme has some other definition so how would we reach a global audience based on that that's my question yeah 7p framework uh, i developed along with dr rick mas from university of north texas in the us was uh, it is applicable for any company regardless of its sector or industry uh, to benchmark i suppose if company has to go to global markets international market company has to use some criteria to decide whether they are going to survive and succeed in foreign market so this is a basic framework which they can use to do uh, a pre market uh, entry plan because you have to do a pre market and replan before you should uh, venture and invest your money to uh, you know in 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 some specific countries before you enter there so this is based on for example 7p framework consists of uh, an equation and a formula performance is a function of potential path process uh, problems um you know and pace uh, pace is the speed at which you have to enter the business and 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 then pattern so uh, all those uh, six other piece and so that means uh, you know so it, it is useful for digital it companies it is useful for construction companies it is useful for uh, telecom companies any company which is going to enter into foreign market they can use this framework scope framework is useful for small companies especially traditional small companies high tech small companies need not do this uh, i mean scope framework because scope framework is uh, formulated uh mainly for the uh, manufacturing or traditional uh, small companies in the traditional sectors okay sir there are two more things i would like to ask like interdisciplinary research it's getting more important nowadays like data analytics with digital marketing or data analytics with hr that is getting more uh, importance like ai that concepts are coming up so it, it will be surely having global uh, audience for that but uh, how is the scope how can you say something about that like can share any yeah. these, these are all different perceptions you cannot say that uh, everybody will agree with that interdisciplinary research is very important there are some viewpoints that you have to focus on some specific area some some experts believe that way and they promote their idea some other experts uh, believe that you uh, you know interdisciplinary research is better than focusing on one area so these are two schools of thought it's like coin has two sides so this is a very debatable question that you are asking okay sir one more to, uh, just last question as in the introductory you told me, you shared us that six papers you are getting per day so can you just tell me how much in six papers how much is acceptance how much is rejected per day you are getting you, like 2020 uh, acceptance rate in international journal of consumer studies was 6.3 or 6.4 percentage okay thank you thank you sir you are providing a road map for us thank you sir. Thank you, Mr. Anu. Uh, now I request Mr. Satish Raj to raise your question. Yeah. Good evening, Professor. Professor, I am Satish Raj from SR University. 
so professor one uh, thing am i audible professor yes so professor uh, when we are taking precautions regarding the topics which are uh, repetitive but the uh, concern is when we are conducting the same uh, you know study in indian context on indian consumers so uh, how how can we highlight the study with Uh, by topic it might be repetitive and uh, the editor might uh, you know reject maybe the possibilities of rejection is high when they look at the topic but yeah. uh, in indian context if you are going on that so what care can we take regarding the topic i told you you are not you, are, you, are, you see if you want to publish in a global journal ideally you should not focus too much about indian consumers what is your topic indian consumer is not your topic indian consumer is your sample so you have to talk about the advancement or developments in your topic first in the introduction and only you talk about indian consumer in your methodology and you only mention that in your uh, maybe abstract just mention only in one sentence don't talk too much about india in the introduction and don't talk too much uh, about india everywhere so you focus on your topic indian consumer is not topic you will have some other topic right indian consumer is your sample yeah yeah professor so if i am talking means if i talk consumer perception towards small scale industry products so you know this topic might be looking repetitive so yeah of course the, the, the first thing is that you have to you have to identify a topic which uh, which is not uh, repeatedly and recycled uh, which is not repeatedly researched in a recycled way so there has to be some newness in your topic that the things are also important otherwise uh, you will have uh, 50 rejections or 40 rejection i mean rejection is part of academic life that is the reason for it. if you look at iims iims are giving 1 million indian rupees which is 10 lakh indian rupees if you publish a paper in an era and journal if it is a single author paper if it is a two authors you get still you get 5 lakh rupees in terms of your points and three authors you will still get about 3 3 3 lakh indian rupees why do they give that because uh, journals are supposed to go by rigorous policy and uh, uh, journals have exclusiveness and uh, that is the reason uh, they are giving that kind of remuneration right yeah yeah okay uh, thank yeah. you sir thank Sadiq you much. Uh, is there anything you would like to ask okay i go ahead and then i will stop uh, i will i will wind up and then we have we will have some more time towards the end so sure. now i'm going to talk about uh, dons what are the dons that you have you can keep in mind when you when you submit a paper or when you develop a paper yeah my first point is don't cite from regional local or national journal when you submit to a global premier journal because if you submit uh, so many people sometimes uh, some people ask me to co-author some papers and when i look at their papers recently one shika from india asked me to co-author a paper and when i look at her paper uh, she has all the local citations all the local journals and uh, so such kind of uh, things will create uh, problems and uh, another uh, person also approached me to co-author and some some half done paper uh, she also sent and then uh, these are all problems and they had lot of citation from indonesian journals lot of uh, indonesian local journals local journal citations will not work because they are not considered as authentic and reliable they are not considered as uh, globally acceptable and avoid citations from website if possible this is another don't you know so because if you cite too much from websites and newspapers sometimes people cite from newspapers no newspaper uh, like uh, times of india or hindu avoid citations from those kind of newspaper they are not considered as uh, authentic they are not considered as academic they are not considered as reliable as far as the global academia is concerned so avoid citations from local journals avoid citations from websites if possible and your title the next point is don't include suppose like uh, someone talked about uh, consumer pattern in india or consumer perception in india so you only talk about the title consumer perception about small scale firms your title should not reflect your country this is part of your generalization strategy if you want to present the paper as a generalized paper avoid country name in your title don't include your country name or state name in your title have a generalized title that will help you and next point is 
don't worry about uh, spending a lot of time to change formats these days. Because journals have implemented free format policy, 90% of the journals have implemented free format policy these days, only 10% journals are bureaucratic in terms of uh, asking others to format it as per their format for the first submission. So 90% of the journals these days is free format policy. So you can submit, uh, suppose if journal A reject your paper, you can submit this paper to journal A without spending a lot of time to free, uh, reformat it. So, and, and uh, 80% of general editors do not care format as most of them have implemented free format policy. So don't need to spend all your time to change formats. Okay. Yeah. And another point is look at journals, those who are faster. This is also important. For example, if a journal has appointed a new editor in chief, at least for first one year or first one and a half year, that editor in chief is likely to be faster. There are some slow journals. So don't submit to slow journals, submit to faster journals. This is important. Journal of Retailing and Consumer Services is a relatively faster journal. But there are some journals uh, like Information System Frontiers is a very slow journal. Uh, recently, Journal of Management Studies rejected a paper which I co-authored after eight months. It is a FT50 premier journal, but they took eight months to get two reviews. That also after we reminded after seven months. So some journals are very, very inefficient, including FT50 journals like Journal of Management Studies. It is unfortunate, but some of them work that way. Some editors are very inefficient. They don't care because they, they consider this general editor job as a second job. The first job is university job. So this is not a good idea, but some of them are like that. They don't give enough uh, uh, priority for managing the journal. So you have to identify faster journal. Fortunately, I, or, or I, I should not say fortunately, with hard work, uh, my editorial team, with the help of my associate editors, I implemented a lot of fast track policy for International Journal of Emerging Studies, Emerging International Journal of Consumer Studies. And uh, according to the latest statistics, John Wiley and Sons, the American publishing company with offices in UK and US, they have announced that International Journal of Consumer Studies has emerged as the fastest journal of Wiley uh, compared to their 100 plus. Uh, academic journals or 200 plus, I think they have 200 plus academic journals. Uh, so our journal has the, uh, you know, our journal has the, the, the uh, is, is the fastest journal of uh, Wiley Group. So this was, this was something that I did uh, last year, so remarkable work. So likewise, there are some faster journal, but majority of the journals are not fast. So my suggestion is that if a journal rejects your paper, submit to next journal same day or next day. Don't wait one month to submit to next journal. If you are slow, journals are much slow and it will take four years for you to publish your paper. So you have to be faster. It's very important. So it is like, you know, uh, survival of the fastest. That is what is uh, uh, academic uh, journals. Uh, I mean, the principle in which academic journals work, majority of them are slow. So you have to be, you will achieve success only if you are faster. It's very important. Otherwise, if you lose your enthusiasm, I mean, if you take one month time to uh, submit to the next journal, if journal rejects, it will take four or five years to publish your paper. And don't defend yourself if you get a revision. Don't try to defend. You may be more knowledgeable, but try to respect the comments of other people, other reviewers. And don't use recycled theories like theory of planned behavior if you want to submit to a premier journal. So if, you are, if your goal, aim is to submit to a, any ordinary journal, theory of planned behavior is okay. But if your goal is a premier journal, this kind of recycled theories will not work because there are 10,000 of studies using the same theory. Yeah, so uh, these are some questions which I can answer in case if you don't have questions, but uh, if you have questions, I would be happy to answer your questions and uh, stop sharing my slides and uh, because uh, two-way interaction is much more better.
Thank you. Please be quick and don't ask uh, your son. Whether I'm audible and all, just introduce yourself and ask your question straight away because uh, we have limited time. And uh, please open up your camera so that uh, that will be much better because if you close uh, your camera, it doesn't look more professional. Professionalism comes with open cameras. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Sir. Uh, there are participants uh, raise their questions in chat box. Uh, shall I read it now? You can you can ask them to. I mean, in case if they have question, let them directly ask. Okay. They, you know. Uh, Indrila Verma, uh, can you please uh, unmute and speak? Professor Indrila Verma. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, please. Sir, sir, good evening, sir. Uh, I am a research scholar and I had this question that um, as you have put it in the slide, how do you select the journals? Which journal should you uh, publish? Which are the, uh, you know, uh, the valid journals that one can, uh, you know, for consumer behavior where we can publish? See, you have, you have, uh... Uh, general quality list. So these are downloadable lists like uh, Australian ABDC list. There yeah. is a UK, UK uh, ABS list. Okay. So download this list. Like mm -hmm. uh, suppose, you know, so you, you have a Gita or Bible or Quran at your home, the same mm -hmm. way, download this list. If you are a researcher, download this list, save this list in your laptop and refer this list. They have ranked journals and uh, you can also look at the impact factor of the journal on the journal websites. So, and look at the list and look at the rank. And uh, if you're confident that your paper is great, submit to uh, top journals. If you think that your paper is not great, submit to low rank journal. Okay, sir. Thank you. Scopus is also a list or uh, do you recommend Scopus? Scopus, Scopus? I mean, you know, all the Scopus journals are there in Australian list and UK list. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. Sir, so one more question I want to ask. Scopus so, doesn't rank journals, okay. Okay. Scopus is Scopus is just a For list. Index, indexing. Okay. Yeah, but yes. it doesn't rank the journal. So can I ask one question? Very uh, basic question. So if I am referring to my own paper which I have written before, and if I uh, so if I cite my uh, paper which I some some part of the paper which I have written, that also will uh, tantamount to plagiarism. It's, Plagiarism is like if you if you copy too much stuff from your own paper, if it is already published, yeah, then it it it, it will it will it will definitely uh, be a self plagiarism. Okay, there's something called self plagiarism. And sir, so you said for uh, English uh, correction, uh, you 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 quoted some website. I couldn't catch that uh, name. Uh, Upwork.com. Can you spell it so I put it on the chat box? If Up, you don't... Upwork. Upwork. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, love. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, now, Savita Rao, ma'am, is waiting. Ma'am, can you please unmute and speak? Yeah, uh, yeah I'm unmuted. Actually, um, sir said it is impolite to keep our uh, camera off, so that's why I switched on. But, uh, sir, already, Professor, already has a few questions which actually were in my mind. So, I would wait for you to, uh, you know, elaborate on the questions which you have put on the slide. Thank you. It's a, it was a pleasure listening to you, Professor. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. And uh, so we have a question from Harshini SP. So good evening, sir. I have a question, sir. How to convert uh, our conference proceedings to a reputed journal, sir? Uh, that's my question. Conference proceeding is totally different. Publishing in a conference proceedings will not give you an edge compared to, because uh, they are not considered as an achievement. They are, they are just considered as, a, uh, you know, a basic uh, thing, basic requirement. But uh, journal publication is used for recruiting professors, recru promotion, uh, faculty recruitment uh, all over the world. Thank you, sir. Yeah, uh, thank you, ma'am. Now, a uh, question from Nadi Akhtar. Professor Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, again, question from uh, Dr. Venugopal Janaswamy. Professor Venugopal, can you please unmute? Yeah, Nadim Akhtar here, sir. Can you please give me a chance to ask? Yeah, please, sir. Proceed, sir. Yeah. Uh, 
Hello, Professor Paul. I just wanted to ask you ki how we can formulate models. As you said, you had formulated some models. So, what is the thinking process to formulate a model? If you are thinking something new, to yeah, create, I mean, you know, so yeah. you need you need you Thank need you. to be a thought leader for that. I mean, you need to have brainstorming uh, session. I mean, it can be your own idea, or if you have a co-author, you can also have discussion with the co-author. So, you mean. Uh, you need to have original thought process. It's like, you know, so how do uh, pharmaceutical companies make uh, medicines and those kind of things? They, they, it comes out of ideas, right? So yeah. you need to think about and you need to, you need to have wide reading first thing, wide reading, and then, then ideas uh, you need to generate based on wide reading. Oh, reading is it? I mean, it can, ideas, you can get ideas by watching uh, TV also sometimes because you get some new ideas, you know, ideas can come based on reading or watching uh, good programs in TV. So some, some, you know, idea or even suppose if you attend some seminars, some uh, speeches, you might get ideas from speeches. So different ways you get ideas, right? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Where you go, Paul, sir? Are you there, Dr. Venugopal Janaswamy? Okay, uh, so now we have a question uh, from Kavita R. Kavita R. Gaudi. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ma'am, your voice hello, is... Hello, Professor. Uh, it was amazing, you know, you. Hello? No, not yes. Am I audible? Yes. Sir? Yeah, yeah, please. So I think, yes, I just wanted to say that we will not entertain SPSS analysis and we should always go for AMOS or R, uh, so high version of analysis. Or SPSS, will it also be acceptable in ABDC journals? ABDC has so many journals. ABDC has uh, 5,000 journals and the vast majority of them are C category journals. You cannot compare C category journal with A star and A, A category journals. So if your goal is just ABDC is published in C journals, anything is acceptable and there are thousands of journals in trying the C category journal. So, but if you want to have, I mean, SPSS based analysis is acceptable in A star journals and A journals also provided uh, uh, your other parts. It doesn't matter SPSS or AMOS, what you use, but you need to have a paper which is uh, useful and insightful. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. So now uh, we have a question. Thank you. Again from Dr. Rupesh Kumar. Yes, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. Um, uh, good evening, once again, Professor. So I have two questions, Professor. Uh, the first question is like, which is the very strongest part to be considered in a paper? Like uh, what the reviewers or the editor look in the paper, like whether it is a research approach or the research gap or the tool, statistical tools which we have used, which is the strongest part, like where, wherein we should concentrate more. Everything is important. So they look at more, you know, majority of them look at comprehensively, majority of them have an integrated view so rather than uh, just looking at one part because, uh, uh, you know, overall, uh, comprehensiveness and overall contribution is important. As I mentioned, there are three dimensions in all research paper, conceptual contribution, analytical contribution, and presentation contribution. So everything needs to be perfect. All these three should be that. So these three things, you are putting it in a different way. That's the thing, same thing. I mean, an old wine in new bottle, but all these should be, a, whatever you talk about is the same thing what I talk about, but uh, all should be perfect. So before you submit a paper, make sure that you read five times before you submit a paper. Make sure that you give it to your colleague to read and then uh, submit to a journal only when paper is perfect. Otherwise, you will create bad impression. Okay. Okay. And, and one more question, uh, Professor, like in the managerial implications, the managerial implications should under, address to the industry or it should address to the industry as well as to the society, like what is the uh, recommendation we are going to give it to? So what, what would be the focus like? Implications for managers, you know, so how does this uh, paper, insights from paper uh, can be used by managers to implement their uh, strategies and policies and practices? Okay, I mean, so, so it is the focus would be, 
you don't have to talk Sorry, too much yeah. about society contribution for society because some topics uh, contribution for society you cannot talk about it uh, depending upon the topic if something is if your topic is society oriented you can talk about uh, society implications but otherwise you cannot talk too much about society okay okay thank you professor thank you thank you sir uh, next thank dr you. bipin chandra pant professor bipin chandra are you available yeah okay so next uh, question raised to by uh, aditi ja aditi ja are you available ma'am okay uh, sir can i ask that question they have uh, put in the ch chat box okay yeah uh, can you please help us by giving example to explain identifying research gap identifying research gap that's why i said so when you submit a paper you are supposed to survey all recent studies in, on your topic uh, and you have to show that others have been done your study so that is what is research gap research gap simply means that uh you are not doing a repetitive recycle study research gap simply means that you have you have survived you have reviewed all the studies on your topic and then you have to cite all the recent studies and then you have to still establish that this is the pioneering work or this is the original work because there is a research gap for this particular study with this particular objective or this particular hypothesis or this particular uh, way of approach or this particular methodology and then and, and that is what is the research gap okay sir. thank you sir and there are some questions from uh, satish raj uh, satish raj are you available can you please ask now satish yeah professor uh, i raised my question i raised my question and got the clarification thank you Okay. Okay. Fine. Thank you. And uh, yeah, uh, there are so there are questions from uh, uh, participants who are in online, I mean, live streaming, Facebook live streaming. I will ask those questions now. Uh, just a minute. Uh, so there is a question from Soma Shaker. Uh, how many references to be considered in international journals? i mean it can be 40 references or 30 references so it can be 50 references also it can be 60 also so there is no uh, thumb rule regarding the number of references but it should come from reasonably well known journals and uh, they are considered as a reliable journal uh, and also, as i mentioned before it should not come from local journals or websites or newspapers uh, uh, yeah that's important yes <laughs> sir yeah please sir who wants to ask professor uh, yeah uh, what might be the appropriate uh, number of papers uh, uh, we can go on with it which number pages oh page limits and word limit it depending upon the journal almost all premier journals permit 12000 words in research paper so 50 pages in double space so but there are some journals like emerald emerald uh, has a word limit emerald uh, most of the emerald journals uh, permit only 8000 or 9000 uh, words so but uh, uh, you know so uh, this this can be a challenge if you submit to an emerald journal but non emerald journal most of them permit 12000 words thank okay. you thank you thank you so there is one more question in uh, facebook live streaming uh, while presenting analytical table interpretations shall we just focus on main result table or need to justify the result with statistical tools i mean you have to talk about what statistical tool you use in your methodology and then present the result in table format okay sir. okay and uh... Yeah, participants if anybody uh, wants to ask question you can ask we have few more minutes to come professor our last question uh, do we have any kind of uh, you know uh, uh, writing tips uh, websites or uh, any kind of uh, you know we can get it from the uh, general website but still any other 
Uh, I mean, in case, suppose, I don't know whether what uh, exactly you mean by writing uh, tips. And I suggest that, suppose, if you're looking for papers, uh, uh, you should have an, as a researcher, you should have an account on uh, researchgate.net and academia.net. Uh, those are very useful. And I, I also have uh, a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash VR Destin Paul, where I upload videos about uh, publishing and writing tips and those kind of things, writing different type of articles. I have a video on writing literature review articles. I have a video on uh, writing theory development articles on my YouTube channel. So youtube.com slash DR Justin Paul. I would like to okay, welcome to then, visit that uh, channel. Watch the videos and you can also subscribe it uh, free of cost. So there are not only my channel and there are a lot of, lot of videos on YouTube uh, these days uh, about uh, research, develop, research paper writing. Yeah, I do announce special issues. I sometimes I edit special issues. Currently, I'm editing uh, four special issues this year. One is uh, for general of business research. It's about literature review on consumer behavior and customer behavior. And then International Journal of Consumer Studies has a special issue on literature review. And another special issue for the International Journal of Consumer Studies is on theory development. We have just launched and Russell Bulk, uh, myself and uh, Carmen Valor and Ben Markley are editors with the deadline is, uh, uh, you know, theory development special issue deadline is 15th of September. And I am editing another special issue on must teach marketing for general business research. You can see the details on general business research website. Deadline is 15th of June, must teach marketing special issue. So, uh, and I post this kind of special issue announcement uh, on my Twitter page, twitter.com slash DR Justin Paul. If you uh, subscribe to my Twitter, you get this special issue announcement time to time. and we also have a group called Economics, Commerce and Management group on Facebook and uh, you can join and I, I share a lot of uh, information on that Facebook group. Uh, uh, it is called EcomNet, Economics, Commerce and Management Network. So if you join that group also, you get a lot of uh, updates about research and stuff like that. Thank Sorry. you. Thank you very much, Professor. So good, good evening. Yes. Good evening, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Please, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, I am uh, Sir, I have a doubt, sir. It may be a basic, sir. Uh, sir, the thing is, uh, I am uh, giving a recent review of literature in my paper. The recent in the sense, I may take a three or four months to complete my paper. If it is, uh, it, it happens, even the uh, recent uh, review may be an older one. What is the time gap uh, majority of the situation expected? Uh, that is my question, sir. Expected so the review of literature. Uh, yes, You're sir. talking about the time taken by journal to accept it, or reject? Yes, sir. It, it, no, sir. If I publish my paper, the review which I uh, which I am giving in my paper may be a six months or one month older one. The review, uh, the paper reviewed by me and given yeah. in my paper. Uh, uh, in the two months or three months, no, gap, no, no, a new no. paper might have come in my study itself. Yeah. So, uh, so what is the time gap uh, in uh, majority of this time expected? You are supposed to review studies uh, published uh, uh, till recently before you submit uh, a paper to the journal, especially if the target journal has published uh, studies in your area, the editor of that journal will be aware of that studies and if the editor doesn't see that uh, paper in your paper, uh, he or she may not be happy. So make sure that, as I mentioned in my do list, make sure that you uh, search the target journal website using your keywords and download all. At least, if you don't, have, if you cannot download, at least read the abstract of all related papers in the target journal. And if target journal has published recent articles in your uh, area on your topic make sure that you reference that uh, recent paper from your target journal, that is more important. Sir, if it is, uh, if we do that, sir, if Hello? we do that, uh, the gap may, uh, may be, need to ch change it, isn't it, sir? The gap which I have given in my... Yes, paper. somebody else, somebody else, somebody else is publishing on your same topic then there is no score for your same topic. That's why I said, so, so you have to be fast mover in your research. So you have to, suppose if a journal A rejects, you have to submit to journal B next day or same day. Okay, sir. 
Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Professor. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Hello, Professor, sir. Doctor Venu Gopal Jana Swami, please sir, proceed, sir. Hello. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Hello. Sir, I am Venu Gopal speaking from Hyderabad. Suppose in case if I want to publish an article, if I take under literature review the essence of some others, if I put in my own words, it will come. It will come under plagiarism. Hello. If you copy more than fifty words, not copying, words. sir. I will uh -huh. take the essence conclusions. That means uh, essence the recommendations of the other party results. Uh, if I express in my own words, uh, I will yeah, acknowledge will... the concern other name also. It will if, it will if, come if, under plagiarism. No, in that case, it will not come under plagiarism. If you rewrite, it is not plagiarism. So if if if, if the sentence is saying, but I will acknowledge the other name. See. What is plagiarism? Normally, journals uh, consider 20 or 25 percentage uh, similarity in all papers. That means uh, when you have a paper, 20 or 25 percentage of your sentences uh, are accepted as an acceptable similarity threshold limit. Suppose if your uh, percentage of similarity exceeds 20 or 25 percentage, some journals go by 20, some journals go by 25. So then it can be uh, it can be a similarity. So up to 20, 25 percent is allowed. But I will not copy, sir. It will not be copied. The concluding yeah. remarks, sir, what others have stated, I will put in my own words, sir. Just like yeah, X has stated like this, sir. His concluding remarks are like this, sir. I will put it in my own words, sir. Is it comes under black? That's what I require clarification. That's why I'm saying if you put it in your words, it is not plagiarism. Okay, thank you, sir. Mm. Yeah, thank you, sir. Participants, any other question? Thank, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Any other... sir. Sir, can I request you to please explain the questions on your slide, if you may? There's so many questions on my slide. <laughs> we don't the... have much time for that. Okay, Sorry, sir. we can't have hours, you know. Okay, any one other? Can we have at least a couple of them? I saw four. Yeah, even I saw four. One or two, so any, any other question from participants? Uh, sir, uh, there is one question from uh, Facebook uh, live streaming participant. Uh, can you suggest some tips uh, specifically for qualitative research? Qualitative research, I would suggest that you should uh, uh, download high quality qualitative paper. And uh, it is difficult to publish a qualitative paper compared to quantitative paper, but, but if you have rigor in your qualitative paper, synthesis in your qualitative paper in the form of tables is very important. Uh, qualitative paper based on interviews can be developed and written, but you need to have synthesis in the table format. That is very important and that is very critical. Synthesizing. Okay, I can try to show these uh, questions again. These are the questions I collected from another program and included in my slides. So these, these questions came from different participants. That way, uh, you know, it's not something uh, that I prepared. So these are people's questions. Right. Participants, any other question? So one last question, sir. Uh, you have written on your slide that how do you convert a conference paper to a journal paper? So if you, yeah. Um, I, you know, so conference paper and journal paper, I told you it's 10 times different. So publishing in a conference paper doesn't give you any credibility. Publishing correct. in journal, that gives you all the credibility. That is the difference. No. So, uh, How to uh, convert? Follow, huh. you you written. follow all, the, all, all, the, all the rules that I talked about. Okay. So I talked about because conference paper, almost all papers are accepted in conferences because conference uh, organizers need registration fees. They will accept yeah. all papers. Correct. So th that is not an achievement. So okay. you have to follow all the rules that I talked about to, to get a publication in a good journal. So okay. I just want to know, know that if I have submitted a paper in a conference, I can convert it into a research paper and send it to a journal. I, I mean, if your conference proceedings should not be online, if your conference, if you're published in a conference proceedings online, yeah. so that, 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 then if general checks similarity, so oh. this will be, this will be a problem. Okay. Oh, okay. So but if they publish only in a book, which is not online, then okay. it will not be a problem. Okay. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Uh, sir, you could have, uh, uh, yeah. your question number three answered, please. The earlier slide. What are the primary points to keep in mind while aiming at a Scopus Index journal? 
this is this, all the points that I talked about. I already talked about these points. Okay. Yeah, I just compiled these questions from another webinar which I delivered last year. Okay, sir. Sir, I think it's time to uh, conclude. Uh, yeah. Is there any other uh, critical questions? Are very much important, and we don't want to miss those questions. Any I mean, questions? it's it's participants' questions. It's not my question. That was last question from my end. Uh, for a budding researcher, uh, how do you suggest uh, to select a, you know emerging topic to conduct a research uh, to get uh, you know to publish? Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. You need wide reading, so you need to have uh, thought process, brainstorming, and talk to published, experienced people. So all these things are very important. For example, see, see, I, I didn't work with a very achieve, achiever supervisor for my PhD. So you have an, suppose if your PhD supervisor is a great, great professor with a lot of publications, you have a plus point. But if your PhD supervisor is an ordinary professor, you don't have a plus point. So you have to work all, all you have to do all the work then. So I, I, I worked uh, and I, I uh, whatever I achieved is because of my own work. So uh, I, I would suggest that, uh, you uh, can also do the same thing and you can achieve provided you have the willpower, determination, dedication, sincerity, and a lot of work is required. I mean, you know, yeah. So depending upon how ambitious you are. Okay, so thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, I think uh, we should conclude. So thanks a lot uh, for your effort and you have answered all the questions patiently and participants also, they maintain the decorum and 99% uh, uh, they were clear in their questions. Uh, so now this is a time to uh, give what up thanks. I request our uh, honorable Dean Student Empowerment, Professor Chetan Bajaj to deliver what up thanks. So good evening, good evening, uh, good evening Professor. That was an excellent se session, Professor Justin Paul. And the amount of interest, the amount of questions coming forth, there is nothing to prove beyond that. It is one of the most uh, wonderful sessions I have been through. And now how to compare it? Now the question comes, God created mankind. We researchers create the mankind's future. Now God followed some do's and don'ts, which Professor Justin Paul said, the similar do's and don'ts that DNA may match from one generation to other, but fingerprints will not match. Similarly, God said some don'ts also. So if we look at those do's and don'ts and we relate, yes, each paper has to be unique, like Professor Justin Paul said, we cannot copy, copy, we have to be fast. We have to avoid those don'ts, don't be local, don't be think global, your publication should be global. So all those same do's and don'ts which the God laid for us is what Professor Justin Paul has told. And because we are creating that future, when God created mankind, he had the same do's and don'ts. And now, so this was a fantastic session, so overall, Thanks a lot, Professor Justin Paul. It was amazing. And then I should also say thank the management of uh, Firebird for arranging such a wonderful session. Professor Ram Kumar, who has been coordinating, hosting such a love, so much effort he has put in. And above all to the participants, because such a lovely participant with so keen interest has watched this entire proceedings. It is simply amazing. Uh, I thank every one of you all, each and every participant. And again, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Professor Justin Paul. It was really amazing. And I do hope that at least each of us come out with some brilliant international publication and then only we'll do justice to you. So thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. So um, thank you for this invitation. And I would like to uh, thank all the participants for asking questions and uh, making this session as a useful session. And in case if you need any help, just send me an email, profjust at uh, uh, gmail.com. And uh, you can follow me on LinkedIn or Twitter or YouTube, anywhere, any social media I have presence and I'd be happy to help you. Thank you. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you. Dear participants, we'll meet in the next webinar. Thanks a lot for your participation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So we can Thank leave you, now, right? Sir. Thank you. Yeah, we can leave. Thank you, Justin, sir. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, Paul, sir.
you. Okay, bye. Thank you very thank much. You, thank you. Thank you for the insightful session, Dr. Paul. Thank you so much. I've been following you on LinkedIn. So I was very much excited to attend this session. Thanks a lot. Thank, thank you. Sir. Sir. Thank, thank, thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye, sir.